In this bulletin, a holiday tragedy as a teenager drowns off Bali. Questions over whether the latest petrol probe will ease pain at the Bowser. A dying teenager's final goodbye to family and friends. And a terrorist's handbook reveals how Australia could be targeted. This is Seven's 4.30 News with John Mangos. Good afternoon. We begin with a developing story. A 16-year-old boy from the New South Wales Central Coast has drowned while snorkelling off an island near Bali. Jack McCabe was on holiday with his family when the tragedy happened. Our reporter, Geraldine Nordfeld, is in Bali. She joins me now on the phone. Geraldine, what do we know so far? A little later on, a special story on the mentors helping teenage mums to stay in school so they can provide a better life for their children. But straight ahead, though, another bank cuts its interest rates. We'll tell you who and how much next. Also, the explosive find outside a city apartment block. And why it looks like the end is nigh for French President Nicolas Sarkozy. Westpac is the latest of the big four to move on interest rates, but like NAB and the Commonwealth, it didn't pass on all of the Reserve Bank's official reduction. Westpac will reduce its standard variable mortgage rate by 0.37 of a percent. On a $300,000 mortgage, that's a saving of around $900 over a year. That's a very substantial benefit for many householders out there and certainly for small businesses. But Mr Swan has still criticised the banks for not matching the RBA's 0.50% cut. Next in Seven's 4.30 News, things turning around for a thousand truck company workers. Also, bionic eyes closer to restoring sight for blind people. And how strangers across Australia helped a family who lost everything. Workers left out of a job by the collapse of national trucking company First Fleet, a hot property among companies eager for new staff. Up to a thousand employees are set to lose their wages and entitlements after being locked out by administrators yesterday. But recruiters say they should find new jobs pretty soon. Warehousing and logistics, there's plenty of work. I'm sure we can place them. We've got spots now for about 50 or 60 drivers. First Fleet will be liquidated after creditors cut off funds. Unions have blamed Coles and Woolworths for driving down transport industry profits. Well, it's time to check the financial markets now. Here's Bill Evans. Good afternoon to you, Bill. Now, how did the markets finish up this week? Oh, John, down three quarters of a percent today after a, a half a percent negative guide from the US. Uh, the biggest, the most weakness was, when the, was in the resource stocks. They were down over one percent. The financials down about half a percent. Given that we've seen all the big banks reporting this week, uh, only half a percent is is quite quite good because sometimes there is a, a, a reaction at the end of the bank's reporting week. Uh, the big news was the statement on monetary policy from the Reserve Bank, where they have taken a decidedly uh, more dovish attitude towards the Australian economy, highlighting a lot of the things that we've been talking about for the last 12 months or so, weakness in housing, cautious consumer, uh, falling house prices, etc. Uh, it's pretty clear to me that they've also cut their inflation forecast substantially. So they're set to cut rates again, John. I'm not sure whether it'll be in June or there soon thereafter, but it gives, certainly gives me some comfort that our forecast that there'll be another two 25 basis point rate cuts over the course of this year gives me a lot of comfort about that. Reflecting that of course was the Aussie dollar down to 102.5 and I, we, we forecast that that will be back at parity by about the middle of the year and tonight we'll see the US payroll numbers, a huge event in the markets. We're expecting 160,000 new jobs uh, which will start to focus again on the strength of the US economy uh, and, the and the possibility that interest rates may even start to rise in the US. So big, big events out of over overnight in the US. Thanks, John. Bill Evans, thank you so much indeed. Well, 7 News is coming up in your capital city at 6 o'clock. These are some of the stories making headlines. Hello there. Taking a quick look at the weekend weather forecasts now. Tomorrow, Brisbane will be fine. Late showers in Sydney. Canberra cloudy and 16 degrees, showers for Melbourne and Hobart, Adelaide cloudy and 19 degrees, storms in Perth 23. And on Sunday Brisbane will be fine again, Sydney sunny and 21, Canberra also sunny, showers for Melbourne, Adelaide and Hobart, late showers in Perth and fine with 32 in Darwin. The Queen has met Britain's oldest military battalions at Windsor Castle, presenting them with new regimental colours to be worn during her Diamond Jubilee celebrations. 
In London, a German baker has unveiled one of the more unusual royal tributes, a portrait made of hundreds of tiny cakes. And far away from the cameras, the Queen's grandson, Prince William, and wife Kate have celebrated their one-year anniversary with a romantic night at a secluded country inn. Next in 7's 4.30 News, more on the death of a teenager during a holiday tragedy in Bali. Also, an expert tells us if the latest petrol inquiry will ease price pain. And we're all eyes on Australian Fashion Week as the final models rock the catwalk. You're watching 7's 4.30 News. These are the stories we're following this half hour. A teenage boy drowns during a family holiday tragedy in Bali. Questions over whether the latest petrol probe will do anything to lower prices. A notorious killer given no chance of ever being released. And disgraced AFL figure Ricky Nixon asks for more chances and forgiveness. Returning to Bali now, where an Australian teenage boy has drowned while snorkelling off an island near Bali. Jack McCabe was on holiday with his family when the tragedy happened. Our reporter, Geraldine Nordfeld, is in Bali. Next in 7's 4.30 News, we'll have sport with Jim Wilson. And Jim, bring on Friday Night Football. How good is it to have you here, John? And How I, good one, is it to be here? And one more sleep <laughs> until your beloved Swatties. We love Fridays, there's no doubt about it. We're live to the NRL and AFL. As the Bulldogs hope to upset Collingwood at Etihad Stadium, dual premiership captain Tom Harley will join us live. And we're out to ANZ Stadium as the Bulldogs and the Eels get set to renew a fierce rivalry. Good afternoon. Shortly, the push for Rugby League's jewel in the crown. The state of origin to be played regularly in Melbourne. It's caused quite a stir. But first, Friday night footy and the AFL. It's the Western Bulldogs against Collingwood at Etihad Stadium. Let's cross live to seven commentator Tom Harley. Tommy, the Pies welcome back Heath Shaw and Ben Reid. But again, no Dale Thomas. How will this unfold? It is a huge weekend of sport. The yep. Brumbies and the Tars tomorrow night in the National Capital will be something else. I think if the Brumbies win that, they're the real deal. And I reckon your Swannies will be all right against the Crows. I reckon you might be right. Thanks, Jim. Good, Good on to you, see mate. you. Thank okay. you. With man David Brown's just ahead, he'll tell us how the weekend forecast is shaping up. Well, it's time for a look at the national forecast now. We're joined by our weatherman, David Brown. G'day, Brownie. Now, I believe it's been snowing in the high country, really? Yeah, that's right, uh, John, and good afternoon. In fact, uh, Falls Creek in the Victorian high country picked up a few centimetres for the third time in as many weeks. Yes, winter is closing in fast. The snow season officially opens in a few weeks, Saturday, June 9. Now, from our weather cameras, let's have a look. It's been raining in Perth today, the old thunderstorm rolling through as well, currently sitting on 21 degrees. In Adelaide, partly cloudy skies. Nice Quite a nice picture, really, isn't it? Rather cold, though. City on 16 degrees at the moment. And in Brisbane, we've had a few showers and the odd thunderstorm passing you over the suburban area. But in the city at the moment, it's clear and 21 degrees. From the satellite, let's have a look. This uh, active trough is producing areas of rain and thunderstorms over southern parts of WA. And it'll continue for at least another 24 hours. Tail into this system is fueling scattered showers and storms around the central east coast. This low has been delivering showers around the western half of Tasmania and southern parts of Victoria today. The low's on the move. In fact, it's moving slowly south and we'll see the weather clear around the central east coast tomorrow. But more patchy rain and thunderstorms expected in the southwest. Let's have a look at the forecast for tomorrow. Rain at times, maybe a thunderstorm in uh, Perth, a top of around 23 degrees. Adelaide should be fine, partly cloudy skies 19. Melbourne just a clearing shower at 2, 16 degrees. Fine in Sydney, around 20. And more su sunshine tomorrow. In fact, uh, for Brisbane, a beautiful day in the way. Should reach 25 degrees. Sunday, let's have a look. Little change in Brisbane. Melbourne should be fine 17. Some rain developing in Adelaide late in the day and around 21 degrees. That's latest weather. John, more details at 6 o'clock. OK, David, thank you very much indeed. And that's all from the 4.30 News team. I'm John Mangos. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you soon.